Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of You Can't Handle the Tooth. This is Dr. J, the Real Floss Boss. Happy to be here with you. Of course, I missed last week, Thanksgiving. Didn't want to annoy you guys as you were connecting with family members and sharing the love. So uh, we're back in action though this week with a new topic. I do want to say thank you, as I always do, and I, as I feel all the time, I appreciate all of the great feedback that I've been getting from these Facebook Lives and the other videos that we put that are out on Instagram and, uh, or I mean on Snapchat and on YouTube, trying to, 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 to fill the world with information and, uh, um, and, and good ideas about dentistry so that you can make uh, the best decisions and choices for yourself with whichever dentist that you happen to be uh, seeing, all right? So the topic for today are those gooey, nasty impressions. No one likes them. You like them? You want one? Do one right now. Open big. I'm just joking, but who likes that stuff? So I want to talk about the different types of materials, why we use certain materials in one scenario and different materials in another scenario, and, um, and where the future of dentistry is going. So this is something you should be thinking about. For most people, not you young guns, not the young guys and girls who have, don't have any crowns, probably don't even know what a crown is if you're in college, right? Which is good. That says a lot about our nation, about our education, that uh, we're able to prevent cavities and decay um, better. However, there are many of us that are my age and even younger uh, but have had, had crowns before or there are going to be crowns in their future and the way most dentists will do this kind of stuff is with you have to get an impression. The other thing that you'll get impressions for are things like braces. If you need braces or Invisalign, the doc's going to get some impressions. If you want to whiten your teeth, doc's going to get some impressions. And we use different materials for different purposes, okay? And so I wanted to talk about that real quick and then I wanted to talk about the future of impressions in dentistry, okay, and what's coming down the pipe because it's not the way it's always been and it's not going to be the way that it is, all right? And that's something good to know when you go back to your dentist and they want to do a crown, they may do something you're like, hey, I heard we well, might can do it this way now and you can ask them about that. All right, so the two, two basic types of material that we use for impressions. One is called alginate or alginate. All right, and it is this white powder, you know, it's just white powder. You, <laughs> you uh, use the white powder and some water and you mix it up. This stuff, the advantages to it is it's quick setting. So in about 60 seconds, uh, once it's placed in the mouth, it will set and be ready to take out. Uh, it also doesn't taste quite as bad as some of the other stuff. This is used for things that are typically done in the office. So if you're going to make a retainer, you're going to make, if your office is capable of making night guards in the office, definitely bleach trays. And, uh, and then every once in a while, you may have uh, someone that's a gagger, you know, somebody that just can't tolerate the impression in their mouth for like four minutes or three minutes. And you need to get an impression. Uh, if the dentist uh, or the assistant is really good at it, they can use this alginate stuff make the impression, and then be very, very good at pouring up the stone model because you're going to be using it for a different purpose. But for the purposes of, of retainers and um, bleach and some other things uh, that, are, that are relatively simple, you can use alginate. It's very quick. That's the big advantage. Material out of the mouth, and you're going to pour it up, pour the stone model up in it. It doesn't last all that long. It dries out. It can crack and, and tear easily. Um, some, in some cases you're able to use techniques to preserve it so you can mail it to a lab, but in most cases you got to pour it up in stone right away. You can only pour up one stone model out of it and then it's going to be ruined. Okay. So that's the disadvantage to it. So it's quick, not too bad of a taste. Uh, but the disadvantage is you can't, it's not versatile. It's not as versatile. You can't use it for everything. Okay. That is alginate. And these are good ones. If someone says, I got to get an impression. Hopefully, they're doing an alginate because it's going to be quick and not too bad for you, okay? The second kind of impression material, second kind of impression material is stuff like this. It comes in a little cartridge with a cap, and it, sometimes there are really cool colors and buried flavors. Um, I remember when I was in dental school, uh, you know, 
16, 17 years ago. The stuff that we used, we had to mix by hand, and it's had this smell like um, like a, like you're getting a perm. Like I remember, you know, you, like my mom when she'd get a perm or something. That smell, just like ah, uh, you know, it's not too bad unless it's in the mouth. Then you're like, oh, this stuff is just not good. And uh, that stuff would take like six minutes to set up. So you put it in the tray, and they put it in the mouth, and, and it's just like gooey and sticky and stenchy and not so good. Well, nowadays, these materials, they don't, uh, they don't stink as bad. And they do have a little flavor to them, but I, I can't say that they're good. Okay, so there's a difference, right? They're, they're, they're better, but they're not good. None of them are good. So... Uh, Here's the here's what these are these uh, this material a couple of different uh, types for you nerds uh, there's polyether there's polyvinyl siloxane or commonly known as PVS uh, different different types of uh, material kind of remind you of a silicone gun you know you squirt out some caulk or something kind of like that but stuff that's made for the mouth and you'll you'll squirt this stuff right in the tray and you'll fill it up and then you'll place it in the mouth so. The disadvantage to this kind of stuff is um, it just doesn't taste good. And uh, it also is um, takes longer to set up. So this will take a solid three or four minutes to set up in the mouth. So you have to sit there for three or four minutes. The other thing, though, about it is it's um, the one of the advantages to it is it's really durable. But it's durable because it's not breakable, which means when you pull it out of the mouth, it's not going to tear. Alginate can tear. If you get some undercuts under the teeth or something, the alginate can tear. This stuff is hard. So to pull it out of the mouth, uh, really sometimes you're like, uh, uh, like you think you're going to pull out several teeth at the same time. Uh, so that's the uh, disadvantage to this. It's harder to take out of the mouth. The advantages. This stuff will last. So you can do multiple pours with it. You can pour up uh, three or four models with it. Okay, that's that's one of the advantages. The other advantage is you can mail it. You can mail it to a lab that can do some of the lab work for you, and it preserves its shape. So that's very handy when you're doing some dental work. Um, why would we use this? So we, we've talked about the alginate, which we use for stuff in the office. We'll use this for crowns, bridges, veneers, uh, sometimes for um, orthodontics, like Invisalign, sometimes we'll use Invisalign. If we're going to be sending mo uh, impressions off to a lab, we'll want to use this stuff. Very accurate. They're both alginate is very accurate. Very accurate. You can see a lot of the anatomy, even on the, uh, on the teeth, uh, with the models with alginate and with, uh, with the PVS or polyether. So uh, that's another type of impression material. A third thing that we'll do, which is similar to this, is... Um, Oh, this is the gun, by the way, that it sets in. So, right. Another thing that we'll use is one that's um, clear, like completely clear. We use that sometimes if you have to make a temporary crown. So you'll take an impression before you start, and you'll set that on the side. You'll do the dental work, and then you'll use that impression to make a temporary crown. The other ones that we use are, they're, they're, these all come in different colors and different flavors. But another thing that we would use is for a bite registration. So you get the upper model, the upper impression, the lower impression, and then we'll place some other material on your teeth and just say bite down on your back teeth. And if you have an issue with TMJ or they're restoring a lot of teeth, they may even manipulate your jaw a little bit so you get just the perfect bite so that it's reproducible and it's going to uh, produce dental work that physiologically is going to be kind to your masticatory or chewing system, okay? So those are different types of things. How about these impression trays? Because you may not know this, but there are different types of trays. There are. So I'm going to hold up three different shapes. And you're like, what in the world? So let me tell you about it. This is the most common. Okay, It's one tray for a full arch. So you'll use this on the upper or on the lower. Some of the trays will have this filled in at the top. So the lower, the space right here is for the tongue. Uh, you can use this for the top unless you need the palate. If you need the palate for, say, a denture or something like that, then you'll need a tray that has this enclosed so that that material can stay right there and you can capture all of the anatomy, the grooves and stuff on the, on the palate. But you'll place the material in here, whether it's alginate or whether it's polyether or poly, polyvinyl siloxane, and you'll get the impression, okay? Full arch impression. The second kind that we do is a 
one side impression, okay? So we do the full arch or the full arch, full upper, full lower, or we'll do one side of the mouth. So here's the interesting thing about this. This has a little netting material in it, okay? And you remember I said in most cases we'll take an upper, we'll take a lower, and then we'll take that bite registration. That, so when, when I have them outside of your mouth, I can put them together just like they are in your mouth, okay? So you need that bite registration. Well, this is called a triple tray because it's got the little screen in here. You'll place material on the upper on both sides of it, and you'll place it in the mouth, and they bite down. Now, what does that do? It's awesome. Three in one, triple tray. Triple tray. Three. Upper, lower, and the bite registration all in one. So this saves a lot of time. So instead of having four minutes on the top, four minutes on the bottom, and then another minute in the middle, uh, you know, this will do all three at once in three minutes, and it's done. So we love triple trays. This is for a side. Now, every once in a while, you're working just on a couple of front teeth, and you don't need an entire arch. You don't do an entire arch of the upper, lower, and a bite registration. You can use what's called an anterior triple tray. So that's just what it means. It's a triple tray for the front teeth. So you'll fill this up with material. The further back you go, the better, because you want as many teeth as you can get. The more teeth you have, the better, more reproducible the bite's going to be. But the same thing. You just bite down on the front, just like this. It registers the upper teeth, the lower teeth, and the bite registration, all in one impression. We love these triple trays. Well, that's about all I've got for impressions, uh, you know, that aren't like... Hey, you know, you got a big mouth, you know. That's Rocky Balboa impression. But for dental impressions, that's about all I got. So we've got um, the, the tough stuff, which is good for preservation. We've got the simple stuff, which is quick, and you can do a whole lot of stuff with it, but it's for more simpler stuff. And uh, then you got bite registrations, and you got to figure out why, what in the world, why, why is the dentist doing this particular impression? That would be the question. All right, the future. What's the future of these impressions? I did a video not very long ago, I think it's on the YouTube channel, on digital impressions. And I'll make a I'll do a live video on this again. If I did it, it, it was months ago. But the future, the present, excuse me, the present is digital impressions. I talked to uh, any of you dentists out there that have data that show a number different than this. I'd love to hear it. I talked to the seller of one of these CAD cam machines, all right? So you, you take a camera and you scan the arches. No impressions whatsoever. You scan the upper, you scan the lower, they bite together, and you scan the side of the teeth, and it makes this digital impression of the upper, the lower, and the bite registration. And then on the computer, we can manipulate this stuff. No need for any of this. There's no need. I could, if I wanted to, I could scan the arch for bleach trays. I could scan the arch for night guards. I could scan the arch for just about anything these days. And uh, that that is, I'm going to make a video on that because it's really cool to see. It's very high tech um, and it eliminates this, right? Isn't that awesome? So part of the problem with getting a crown in most cases, you got to get the impressions. You got to get the temporary. You go home three weeks later. They're making the crown. You come back. And you put the permanent crown on. So it's two appointments and you got to have the impressions and the temporary and all that stuff. When you scan these things, you can do the scanning, the designing, you can make it. Uh, the crown can be made in about 10 minutes. So there's some prep work to do. Of course, you'll get numb. You'll prepare the tooth. But when it comes to making the crown, that part takes only 10 minutes. It's a 10 minute waiting period, about maybe 15, 10 or 15 minute waiting period while the crown is being made and then it gets bonded back on in the same appointment. So not only do you not have a second appointment, but the, the crown is started and finished in the same day with no impressions. That's remarkable. Now here's what's so interesting. The, the equipment to do this, very expensive, all right? It's no, no joke. Uh, you know, it's a cost of a house, a small house, like legit, very, very expensive. But what, is it, what does it do? It, it saves you know, the dentist from having to buy this stuff. It saves patients from having to have these second appointments and all that. Um, but these, um, these machines, I asked the guy who sells these machines, I said, tell me, what is this, what's the percentage of dentists in, in the South Carolina area that are actually, that have bought these things? And he said, it's about 15%. I thought that was low, but this is the guy that sells them. So he's about 15% of the dentists actually have this 
equipment to do it. And I said, of those 15%, how many of those are using it to, to its capability? And he said, oh, uh, yeah, not many. So the number is really low. It's actually hard to find a dentist who can do these things in the office the same day. But it's interesting. You can, you can YouTube um, CAD cam dentistry and see what's out there. It's quite remarkable. It's very cool. We're doing less and less impressions. And in my opinion, the future of dentistry, no impressions, just no need. We actually, not only are we doing CAD cam dentistry, but we're also um, uh, many offices, uh, many, there are some offices who, who already have 3D printers. So we don't even have to pour these models up in stone. You know, you, you get the impression and usually you'll mix stone and pour it up in there. Now we scan them and we have a 3D printer that prints the models on those models. You can make the stuff. It's mind blowing. It's really cool. So there's a lot of cutting edge stuff out there in dentistry. Uh, stay tuned. Keep, uh, you know, keep, keep uh, track of the moving ball because it is constantly moving. It's stuff you got to learn all the time in dentistry. But I thought you'd want to know about impression materials, why we do them, which type we do. And, uh, and what the future, the present and the future is, which is less and less impressions. So is it for today on impressions? This is a, the real floss boss saying thank you for logging into You Can't Handle the Tooth. We'll see y'all next week.